cell uses a number of mechanisms to transport material across the membrane. Some types of transport do not require the cell to expend energy and are called passive transport, whereas other types of transport do require the cell to expend energy in the form of ATP, and these are called active transport. The active transport mechanism commonly involves the movement of substances that are enabled to freely cross the cell membrane but are important for cell function. These molecules typically have a small mass such as ions and amino acids. However, active transport can also involve the transport of larger molecules, such as glucose. In some kinds of active transport, specific carrier proteins undergo phosphorylation by ATP hydrolysis. When the carrier protein binds its target, the ATP transfers a phosphate to the carrier protein, changing the shape of the carrier protein. The changed shape gives the target molecule access to the other side of the membrane and the target molecule is then released. This is a general mechanism used to transport many amino acids and ions across the membrane. In co-transport, the movement of one substance down its gradient releases energy used to move another substance against its gradient in a coupled reaction. This process is used to move many larger molecules, such as sugars. All cells have what is called a membrane potential, or voltage, across their membranes. One of the important jobs of active transport is to maintain this membrane potential. The membrane potential results from an uneven distribution of positive and negative ions across the membrane. In addition to this electrical gradient, the uneven distribution of ions also results in an ion concentration gradient. Thus, there are two main forces that drive diffusion of ions across the membrane. A chemical force, which results from the ion's concentration gradient, and an electrical force, which results from the voltage across the membrane. The combination of these forces acting on an ion is called the electrochemical gradient. This gradient determines the direction in which an ion moves across the membrane. As an example of a membrane protein that actively transports ions which contribute to the membrane potential, we're going to take a closer look at the sodium-potassium pump. Because sodium and potassium ions are constantly moving in and out of a cell, the cell relies on the use of a sodium-potassium pump to maintain the ideal concentration of these ions in living cells. This is important for control of cell volume, pH, and nutrient balance of the cell. The pump also helps generate voltages across cell membranes, crucial for the function of some cells, such as the nerve cells. The transport protein involved in the sodium-potassium pump has binding sites for three sodium ions and two potassium ions. The protein also has a binding site for ATP. Although the function of the pump is cyclical, the description of how the pump works will begin with the sodium-potassium pump open to the inside of the cell. In this shape, it has a high affinity for sodium ions, and one will bind to each of the binding sites, for a total of three. The binding of sodium ions to the carrier protein triggers ATP hydrolysis, the breakdown of ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate. The phosphate stays bound to the protein pump, and the energy released by ATP hydrolysis causes the pump to physically change its shape and to open toward the outside of the cell. In its current shape, the pump has a low affinity for sodium ions, so the three bound sodium ions are released to the outside of the cell. The pump now has a high affinity for potassium ions, so two potassium ions will bind. This binding changes the shape of the protein again and triggers the removal of the phosphate group that is attached to the pump. The pump has changed back to its original form and opens toward the cell's interior. The pump no longer has a strong affinity for the potassium ions, causing the two attached potassium ions to dislodge from the pump. The cycle now starts again. Notice that with each cycle of the pump, there is a net transfer of one positive charge from the cytoplasm to the extracellular fluid. This is what results in a membrane potential of voltage, which is a source of stored energy.